welcome to the Seek Go Create podcast. This is your host, Tim Winders. And I just want to thank you for joining us again today. Thank you for downloading, listening. I just constantly want to tell you how much I appreciate all the, all the comments, the shares, and uh, the ratings. I truly appreciate you. Thank you for that. And as I've always said, when I'm doing these interviews, my goal is just to talk to really cool and neat people that I enjoy having conversations with and just turning on the recording, turning on the microphone and letting you listen in. And boy, along that theme today, it's just keeping building momentum. I have Rob Coburn on the podcast. Hello, Rob. How are you? I am great. How are you today, Tim? I'm doing very well. Rob is, I'm going to, I'm going to, first of all, Rob, I'm going to read your bio and then I'm going to let you tell us what you do. Okay. Rob is a business and ministry growth specialist. I love those words, growth specialist, conference coordinator, public speaker, motivational speaker, missionary coach, church branding and marketing expert, as well as a life coach. Plus, I believe you've added a few more titles even since this was written. Rob, why don't you, in your words, tell us what you do. Give us your elevator pitch. Oh, wow. Well, the elevator pitch, I am a full-time lead pastor in Dover, Ohio at the summit. And, uh, and so we added that to that list, but man, it is, it is just an honor to go throughout life and serve people and, uh, and help them get to the next level. So all of those things boiled down into one would be, I feel called to see people and the potential that they have for the future and go inside and maybe mess them up a little bit, but find that nugget of gold and then, and then bring that out. And, and some people don't even know that it's in there. And so, uh, so whether it be a pastor or, you know, marketing and, and automation and all that stuff, they're all tools and uh, they're all tools to get to the bottom, which is whether it's a, an organization, a company, whatever it is, there's some core thing that they were built on that is hidden in most cases. And when you pull that out, things explode. And so whether it be a person, a, a company or an organization, a missionary, uh, that's been my gift since I was really young. And, uh, and so now I'm, I'm full-time pastoring in a great four sport church. And, uh, and so it's, it's good. We're, we're just having a blast every single day. So cool. And the full-time pastor has just been added recently, correct? Yes. Yeah, September 8th of 2019. So, uh, we're recording this. I've been a few months in and, you know, uh, some things go as fast as what you want and some things go a lot slower. And so, uh, we're just, we're just sort of feeling the way out, but, I, we had a great transition in, and uh, and we've just been so uh, so blessed to be a part of this family. We have a we have a, a great family uh, at the summit that is excited to see what God is doing and uh, and be a part of it all around the world. So we've got partners in Bolivia and other places, and so as a family, we're just trying to uh, minister and love on people as much as we can. Yeah. So, but but I have a question, and maybe this is going to start diving into a little bit of your background before we get into all the things you're working on now. And, and, and I, I think what we'll be able to do in this episode also is have you do almost some teaching or some instructing, sharing some of your wisdom. I think that'll be cool as we get towards uh, the latter part of the episode. But um, ministry, your background isn't necessarily ministry. You're a business guy. I know when you and I first talked uh, maybe last year, first we were introduced, you know, we were talking about marketing funnels and business and communications related to business and things like that. G- give, give us a little bit of your background so that we can try to figure out how you've come to the place you are now. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a wild journey. I tell you, it's pretty fun. So honestly, from the time I was really small, I was, I was trying to figure out how to work for myself. And so at the age of 16, I started my first company. And uh, grew that company, did that till I was 20. I bought another company and my dad took over the, the first company I started. So I started mowing yards and doing that kind of stuff. And then uh, whenever I turned 20, I bought a company. I was in college at the time, I bought a company. Uh, my dad started mowing all the yards because I got too busy running the company, going to college, having a family. It was a wild year. When the, the year that I turned 20, man, my life just went, went wild, got married and uh and had school and business and everything else but ran that company for 13 years sold that company and uh during that journey uh we encountered what everyone in america calls 2008 that whole deal and so uh so the company that i had was a flower shop and we really felt the hit 
of 2008. And so I just was at my computer um, following a lot of people on blogs and, and other things that were diving into technology. And I owned a company. I had to figure out how to generate more money. And so um, we we just started, I started looking and, and my wife and I were just digging into what could we uh, focus on to generate more revenue. And so automation was a piece of it. But um, throughout that, uh, I have a lot of ministers in my family, which is really cool. Uh, one of them is a missionary to Israel. And my grand, my uncle came home for, for uh, a meal and stuff and turned into a conversation about, I'm following all these people making millions of dollars. Why aren't you as a missionary making as, as much money as that? and being able to do what you're called to do. And, uh, and so it, it actually turned into taking all that technology that we had implemented in the company and that actually pulled us out of that 2008 dip very quickly using automation and follow-up and all that stuff. Um, but turning that and putting it into missions. And so uh, helping missionaries then, that bloomed into being the lead missionary coach for a major, uh, major missions organization in the United States and globally. And so, um, so I spent some years doing that, but anyway, that's, that's the beginning of it. I've always had the entrepreneurial bent and, uh, and so it's just a fun journey when you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. So, and are you an Ohio guy? Is that where you grew up or where'd you grow yes. up? Yep. Maslin, Ohio, the home of the Tigers, Paul Brown. Um, but I don't live there now. I'm about 30 minutes south of there, but, uh, we, we love our football in this area. So since, uh, so for, I mean, gosh, since, since you were in your 20s and early 20s, you, you've been pretty much operating ministry and business. Is that correct? Yes. It's a unique, uh, a unique combination because uh, I have ministers that come to me and want help. And they, they, they get the, the business side. They get the entrepreneurial side. And sometimes that scares them. And then I have businesses that come and they actually hear that there's really only some key things that you have to implement in your life uh, to get into alignment, to make your business thrive. And that's the spiritual side. And so, uh, so I think that people look at me sometimes and they're like, which one are we going to get? But it's, it's a fun mix. Sure. And, and, and the answer is both. The answer is yes. You know, it's like, what are we going to get Rob the business guy or Rob the minister? And the answer is yes. Exactly. Um, you know, there's one little thing you mentioned. I don't want to, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go ahead and dive into this. Uh, you mentioned that post 2008, and I've been very transparent about a lot of things we went through. We've actually had a few interviews with others that have been through challenges. I don't think that was the theme when we started doing these, this podcast, but it, I think it's part of our history. Everybody needs mm -hmm. to be aware of it. And maybe, maybe uh, many of us are talking about it now as a preparation for an adjustment, economic adjustment that could be coming up. But you said that you struggled with the flower shop. I didn't know you had a flower shop. That's kind yeah. of cool. It'd be fun to yeah. talk about. We were in the real estate business then. And, and that you started doing some work with missionaries and it allowed you to come out of the downturn very quickly. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not sure if this is a practical question or a spiritual question, mm -hmm. but what you were doing and how you were doing it at that time dissect a little bit for us how you came out of it because I think there was more to it than what you shared. Yeah, there, there was definitely. Um, so it is a spiritual thing, I believe. Uh, so one of the things about coaching missionaries is that missionaries, what, what I was coaching them to do was fundraise. So how do you go to a missionary and say, uh, dude, I need money to help you fundraise um, because it, it just doesn't work. And so, um, I, I actually was digging in the scriptures and second Corinthians nine ten says that the Lord gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And, uh, and so I thought, you know what, I've got seed. It may not be a ton of money, but I've got seed of knowledge that the Lord has given me. If I give this out and, and in some cases with technology, we had to buy stuff. So they had to spend money. I'm not saying that I gave it all away. I, I tried to sow as much as I could of my knowledge into them while they bought technology and other things to help in the process. But I feel that the reason why our company came out so quickly is because I turned my attention from trying to dig out of the financial crisis of the company. And I turned my focus to sewing into people that needed what I had. And so, um, so that was the, 
I think the, the combination of the spiritual and the, and the business side is that sowing into those with what you have, uh, the Lord gives you more. And believe me, I gained so much more just by coaching them and helping them to see how to share their stories that I was able to start opening up about my story and, and, and sharing that with other business owners, which unlocked them to, to growth as well. Sure. And, and my guess is, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but you probably can't explain a great deal of the recovery that you went through because of that. If I'm wrong, say, no, Tim, it was A, B, C, D. This is exactly what happened. I did this and this was the result. Yeah. You know, some people listening to this podcast would say uh, that the economy turned around, the, the road that was closed out front now is open and, and that's how it came about. Um, there were probably some of those things that happened that I can't explain. Um, but what I, what I can explain is my focus went away from how do I earn what I need to survive to how can I give what I have to help someone else. That's the only ABC thing that I can give you. There's probably natural things that happen that I don't remember. But I remember that my heart specifically focused on sharing who I was, what God had given me, my anointing with those around me. And that took my mind off of uh, trying to do things for myself and, and I could actually receive. Yeah, that, that was awesome. I mean, uh, to maybe paraphrase what you just said, that you focused on what you can give instead of what you needed or what you could do. And you, you still, I'm sure, worked hard. It probably still looked very similar. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. that 180 of the heart, I guess. I've yeah. observed the same thing. I just, you know, I almost want to pause and let people just let that marinate what you just said, mm -hmm. because that is so powerful that we, especially control people, I being one, I'm sure you're not. I'm sure you've never. <laughs> totally. Things get a little tough. Our natural tendency is to do what? Yeah, of course. Claw your way out. Figure it yeah, out. Yeah, do it under my own power. These two hands, self-made, you know, all that type stuff. But but what I just heard you say was, what can I give? And it happened to be focused on missionaries, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. It, it could just be that you're giving other people in the space that you're in. Yeah. You know, and, and you know what? I don't even believe it has to be in the spiritual side of it. Um, just go help somebody. Help them get to their goal. Uh, as Zig Ziglar used to say, help someone get what, what they want and you'll get what you want. I, I, I believe it is, there is a spiritual dynamic um, to that, a kingdom kingdom process that happens. But um, but it, it doesn't matter if that if that's your if that's your call, if that's where you're aiming. It's just get out of your own self and start to go. And uh, and when you give people the best that you have, uh, you receive way more than than what you've given sure absolutely that is so good and so powerful and to take our eyes off ourself you know it's i think that's in the bible somewhere i don't we don't have to dive into it but yeah anyway not to beat people over the head here we've got we've got an audience that's listening in with from a lot of backgrounds i want to ask one more thing about missions mm -hmm. before we move on to talk about some business startup launch things and all that you have some expertise in we support, we have a foundation, a family foundation. We support a number of missionaries and we do it financially. We also do a little bit of what you're talking about where we just encourage them to have a decent website, do a little bit on social media, you know, <laughs> let people know what you do, you know, send out an email that's not riddled with errors and, you know, <laughs> that uh, looks do good. It with excellence. Yeah. Do it with yeah. Excellence. Just a little bit of excellence there, but but one of the things that just gnaws at me, Rob, and, I, and again, I want you to give me your perspective on this. And I'll just go ahead and blurt it out. I'm wondering if, if in many situations today, we're doing missions wrong. We're just doing it in an old school way where someone says, I want people in, let's just say America to support me financially. I'm going to go to a place that I feel called to. And these people from the U.S. are going to support me financially. And I'm just going to go minister the gospel that sounds so good but i don't see that example in the new testament correct me pastor tell me <laughs> tell me if i'm wrong 
Well, I, I don't think you're wrong. And I think in some cases, in some areas, uh, that is the way that it needs to be. I, I don't, I, I think that there are cases where that needs to be, but, but I also, I've got lots of missionaries that we've coached along the years that, um, that have gone in, started companies and, and use their gift to generate revenue um, and, and do that. I, I want to pause for one second. One of the keys in the story of, or one of the keys in missionary fundraising is they got to be able to share their story. And you were talking about website and social media and all that. That's great. But um, the reason why I focused on automation is because um, the best missionary stories are left in the field. Uh, most missionaries are out there for multiple years. They go out there on day one. They have this miraculous thing happen. God provides for them. Uh, the, the government of the country allows them to come in, whatever that story is. And then over the over time, before they come back or before they post to social or before they do that, um, that story's gone and it's gone forever. And it's the same way in our companies, you know, in our businesses. Uh, I think that one of the reasons, I mean, if you look at my desk, I've got journals everywhere. I got notes everywhere because there's always a story that helps accelerate the next day. Uh, something that happens today that goes tomorrow. And so automation is a way to tell that story to those who support you. So in the, in the, in the way of missions, I believe there is people, there are people that need to go and be fully supported and, and have everything provided for them to go and do the work. I also believe that if you're gifted in entrepreneurial things, or you know how to dig a well, or you know how to do that, go, go take that gift to the people you're serving. And that may be more ministry than just bringing them Jesus because it's Jesus through you. And so anyway, they, I agree with you. I think that there's lots of different ways. And as the church, we often put things in a box. You know, um, the, the worst thing, uh, I love our church. I love everything about it. Uh, the worst thing about the church in America today is that we've built a box around ourselves. We call it four walls. And, uh, and so it keeps us in, keeps others out. And, uh, and so I just continue to carry a hammer around and knock on it every time somebody complains because, listen, it's not there. Uh, it's there to keep us dry. Great. But um, let's get out. Let's do what we need to do. And same thing with our companies. Uh, whenever I own the flower shop, not that we need to go into this, but whenever I own the flower shop, one of the things that I, I, I did every week was I walked, I actually got in my car, drove outside, drove back in the parking lot, got out of my car, went into the flower shop as if I was a customer and, and looked at my experience uh, as a customer. And every single time I walked in, I saw a different perspective. And I think when you're talking about missions, when you're talking about business, small business, large business, management, whatever, let's get out of our normal mindset. Let's go. So, let's come at it from a different direction and we'll see acceleration. Yeah, that's good. And, and I think I think what we've done in a lot of our we'll just call it our institutions, businesses, we both see that a lot. Mm -hmm. Missions, we see it is that we get comfortable, we get complacent, we start doing things the same old, same old, and we pretty much get away from innovation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, I think that's kind of what both of us are kind of piling on here and saying we need to continue innovating in all areas. We need to do it in the way we share the gospel. We need to do it in the way we do our businesses. And uh, I, I, think that's, I think that's really cool. So um, one of the things, I'm going to shift a little bit here because I, could, we could, I think you and I can <laughs> solve all these problems in the next 30 minutes and and it would be recorded, then everyone would have the answers. And then what would everyone do if all the problems have been solved, right? <laughs> um, anyway, um, you, you do a, a lot of work with businesses through, and we'll provide some links at the end and talk more about how people can connect with you. But you do a lot of work with business startup launches, uh, businesses that are stuck, they need to get some growth going. Tell us a little bit about what that looks like. And then kind of as a follow-up, I'm going to ask you, what are some of the biggest challenges you see with businesses? If you just want to kind of go into that or pause. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So um, the first, the first thing that we see in startups and, and other organizations is uh, that, that the, the excitement to do the startup, the excitement to do the thing um, is what people are living off of for the first while in the business. And then you've started companies, you know this. Uh, over time, that excitement gets to be the mundane. It gets to be the, the drag. Um, the thing that you so wanted to get up and do at 2 o'clock in the morning when you started the company three years down the road, 
uh, it, you're, you're looking at three o'clock in the morning saying, oh my, do I have to do it again? And, and hopefully people can carry that on for 30 years and never have that. But uh, what we try to do is, uh, is proof your company from that. And that is in the excitement phase of the launch of a company or in the relaunch of a company or the reimagining of a company is to take that, the, that excitement and put it into setting up processes that will keep you from getting stuck in the mire. Because most of us as, as small business owners, entrepreneurs, we have the energy, we want to start something new. But um, if we don't have a process to take care of it down the road, um, either we're, we're trying to figure out how we fund it and not eat that week, or we're trying to, trying to move on, or maybe the company explodes and then we got 50 people and they're wondering, what's the process? Um, so, so we try to work with organizations, even ministries, and say, how, what is the process? Could somebody else walk into your company today? Could somebody else walk into my church today and know how to run the soundboard? Could somebody walk into your business and know how to run the cash drawer? And, and to do the thing, um, what are the processes in place that you can replicate yourself? And so we use automation to do that. We use all kinds of cool technology to do that. But, um, but that's really the basis of what we work on. And, uh, and you asked about the challenge. One of the largest challenges is that um, people don't want to do the work. Uh, let's, just be, let's just be straight up here. Um, people. Did just, wait, wait, wait. Did you, did you just say people are lazy? I just, I want to make sure we're clear. Did I you said people, people don't want to do the work. You translated oh. it, people are lazy. But no, uh, uh, we all have it. It's good and all. But I, I tell you, my biggest challenge uh, as a business and ministry owner is I have this heart to help you succeed. I have this heart to help you get to the next level. I want to find the gold in your company, pull it out, magnify it to the world. Um, my biggest Achilles heel has been, I believe in people more than they want to work and believe in themselves. And so um, we, we have made an agreement here um, cause we've gotten burned a lot, <laughs> uh, but we've made an agreement here that, uh, that we're only going to work as hard on you as you're going to work on yourself. And, uh, and that goes into ministry that goes everywhere. And, and so for those who are listening, um, you know what, it, it's, it's awesome to go out and get someone to help you do your business, to help you get to the next level, to help you get over, over that thing that you need counseling for. If you're just looking for help in that area, but number one, don't go to those people until you're ready to do whatever it takes to get there. We've had tons of clients over the years that have said they are do willing to do whatever it takes, but when it comes down to doing whatever it takes, it doesn't happen. And so, so just the biggest Achilles heel to growing your company, your organization, doing all that is, are you willing to do the work? Hmm. And you know, I've had to kind of live by that also being in a similar role there are times that I'll put my head on the pillow at night and I wonder, I'll just use Joe for example, I wonder if I'm thinking more about Joe's business succeeding than Joe is. Putting my head on the pillow, still thinking of his business and he's on a two week cruise. <laughs> yep, yeah, uh, you know what my, wife, my wife and I, we, we have done that over and over and over. We've talked about what does this, uh, like, cause I mean, as entrepreneurs, we bring things home um, it's not a right thing to do. It's just, I, and I'm an outward processor. So my wife knows so much stuff about business that she probably doesn't even want to know. Um, but, but one of the things that we've done is what does this look like when, when I'm investing more than the person and, and how do you, how do you deal with that? That's a tough thing. But, uh, as business owners, let's, when we're, when we're going out to get help, uh, let, let's go out with the expectation that I'm going to outwork the person that's helping me. Yeah. I mean, and, and we actually just did a season on leadership. And to me, you know, there was this old term we had, the speed of the group is determined by the speed of the leader, the speed of the organization, the speed of the leader. And I see many people that get in a leadership role, either they're starting something or they're placed there or, and, and all of a sudden they slow down and begin enjoying the fruits and I don't know if you observe this too, but it seems like the organization begins slowing down because people look to that leader, owner, founder, pastor, whatever it is. Agree? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and this comes down to uh, it, what you were talking about, leadership. Investing in people in their dreams changes their present and changes everyone else's future. 
And so what, what our goal is in our organization is to invest in people, the dream that, that they have to do whatever it is that they're going to do, because it, it is going to change their present. But I'm looking past that uh, to everyone else's future because you're in the alignment with what you're doing. And so as leaders, that's our desire. Uh, that's our call. Sure. Do you think people that have owned grass cutting businesses are kind of like the hardest working people out there? I know we sweat a lot <laughs> because I, oh. I cut grass. It was like the first recollection I can remember of money changing hands yep. is I just would push a lawnmower around all over, uh, you know, our subdivision. And it sounds like you cut grass also. Yeah. You know, work really hard. And, uh, and, you know, I, I began throughout that process from 16 on, um, I began to look at it more of the conversations that I had more than the mowing of the yard. Um, because, if I could get them to stand on the porch for 10 minutes, I was able to actually get into their lives. And, and I'd go in one of, one of my favorite clients was a barber. And so I'd go mow the yard, but I'd spend three hours there because I'd go in and hear people's stories and, and engage with them. And at that point I, I didn't, I mean, I wasn't ministering Well, maybe I was, but um, I wasn't focused on ministry. I was just focused on, you know, um, how, how does life affect you? Some of the, some of the best wisdom, on the planet is in our retirement homes and some of the most lonely people in our on our planet are in our retirement homes and if we went in and made it a point for our companies and our employees and our our ministries to go in and sit with these people we would uncover so much gold and bring so much help and vibrancy to those people that uh that man it would help our companies it would help our our cities our governments just to go and hear the stories but anyway so i focus more on that than mowing yards and it, it all worked out. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a that's a great point with the elderly. I'm I'm on the board of a ministry out of Colorado that their primary focus is ministering to those in elder care facilities. Mm -hmm. And when I started before I was even on the board or anything, I was just a volunteer that had three guys that every couple of weeks I would just go sit and talk to them. Yep. And you know this, I mean gosh, this is great pastor stuff here. Maybe we're going to challenge a lot of people that are listening. The statistics show that roughly 87% of all people in elder care facilities have no one come to visit them at all. Exactly. Ever. That includes those with family and things like that. They many times just tuck them away and it's just kind of like a forgotten, forgotten world there. So anyway, very cool that you, you brought that up. So, all right. So you mentioned challenges for businesses, challenge for ministry. And I love how that, that path you went down, uh, for, for work there and just putting in the effort because, and maybe I'm going to tap into your pastor business mind on this. It's real interesting. There is a movement in spiritual circles that talks about rest and stepping into the rest that we know from Christ and all that happened on the cross. And I get that fully as being one that kind of <laughs> is workaholic. Yeah. I also notice people that are working on that rest uh, let me say how I could word this. They're napping might be the best yeah. way of saying it. Yeah. So can you, can you talk about that contrast? I, I, I talked to the Lord about it, but I'd love to hear your perspective on this, this, we hear it a lot. It's a big movement rest. And I believe that, but I also think it's impacting some people that just need to put their hand to the plow and do a little bit of work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would, I would aim to be on your side. I did a sermon, uh, called the power of a promise. It's on the summit's website, but, uh, but what I really is, I was just, just studying the word and studying what, what happens is that sometimes the Lord wants to show up and just be like, I'm going to handle this for you. So just rest and receive your blessing as a son or a daughter in, in the kingdom. Um, but then there's others. And, and in that case, I would think of Daniel in the, in the den there, you know, about ready to be eaten. Uh, he could have tried to claw and get all exhausted, but God said, I'll take care of it. Um, on the other hand, you've got the Israelites, they go across the river into the promised land, and it wasn't everything just happened for them. There was things that they had to do to come into alignment to receive their destiny. And I believe that in today's church, uh, we can fall into, in today's church, we're on the opposite side of maybe where God wants us to be. And that could either be you're working too hard, and you need to receive some things, or you need to rest and not work so hard. But I think that the key is, is that we hear what he's saying for our season. 
And so, so one of the things that, that is very interesting in this day and age with technology and being on your podcast and on your stage, and I love it. I want to thank you for it. It's awesome. Uh, we're, we're about ready to start something where we're at uh, and love to have you on there too. But one of the things that I think is that everybody becomes an expert um, and, and it's really cool. Um, but if you read three books on any subject, you're an expert. Okay. And or, so let me interrupt you. Or how about an influencer? Let's there you I mean, go. throw that word in. Yeah. You're an expert or an influencer, which what does that mean? Exactly. So, so if you're an influencer in this, in this day and age, uh, people take everything you say as that it's for them. And, uh, and one of the biggest things about the church that we've missed is that the Lord is constantly speaking. He's constantly talking to us and he's constantly directing where we need to go. And if we're not hearing and getting a design and his plan for where we need to go, we may be working when he wants us to rest and rest when we need to be working. Mm. Yeah, that's good. You know, for me, Rob, it's interesting at being someone who at times I have the attitude that I can fix everything. I can control things. I can, and I, I know I'm the only guy like that. I know I'm totally, <laughs> but for me, you mentioned relationship with the Lord, which I think that's the absolute key. Everyone needs to hear. And we believe that everyone can have relationship. Yeah. That's really what happened at the cross. It allowed us to have relationship with the father mm -hmm. and the Holy spirit is here with us. But for me, I believe that the Lord has told me to put forth the effort without worrying about the results. Because what I would often do, I mean, just I'll use this podcast, for example, I would be doing massive amounts of marketing funnels, talking to guys like you saying, oh, I need to do this and that. And you know, all he's instructed me to do is share. Yep. Turn, turn on the microphone, talk to cool people like you and let people listen in. That's, that's and so that's my energy my effort goes into that and then i go to sleep at night and go you know i did what i was supposed to do today i talked to rob and it was awesome yeah yeah well it's been it's been a great journey here and and one of the things that you mentioned there i i have to focus on is that we want to go and change the circumstance um you know in 2008 probably in your business as well as mine there's nothing you could do to change the circumstance um, and, and so, so it puts you in a place of, of evaluating who you are more than what you do. And so I think that if, if most people in the world would take a few minutes and realize who they are, uh, and that means pulling back the curtain on all the ugly stuff, um, and, and acknowledging it. So, uh, I don't even know if you know this part of my story, but, um, so my wife and I lost a three-year-old daughter to meningitis and, uh, and I lived for years, never unpacking that in my life and never opening up to allow others into that. Um, now, my wife and I grieve differently. And someday that's going to be a book of, of being on the same path to recovery, but grieving completely different. And, but, but one of the things that, that I noticed is whenever I finally cracked the code of myself, and allowed other people in, which is what I love you're doing with the podcast. And I think that there's people listening to this all over the world. Just take this note that all the things that you've been hiding inside or holding back because you didn't want others to know when you actually release that it's a scariest deal, scariest deal. But when you actually release that, it gives you power to overcome what's been holding you back. And, uh, and so we, we have those walls up for protection, but it actually keeps us from achieving our destiny. And so, uh, so when you said we want to change things, I wanted so much to change the economy. I couldn't, but whenever I changed who I was and how I looked at things, the circumstance changed because I started to sew. Hmm. All right. You, you mentioned something I, I have to do a follow-up on. Thank you for sharing. I did not know that about you and your wife losing a child. Be one of the most challenging things I think that a, a couple could deal with, not to, not to rank things that would be bad or anything like that but how you, you mentioned unlocking some of that you mentioned you held some of it in can you, you know, care how you did that yeah so so my wife was always about um going and talking about it so she did a bunch of groups and and she wanted to talk to everybody i did not want to talk to anybody i wanted to process it myself I dove into business. I actually drowned in myself in new companies and new things. And we, we don't need to get into all that mess. But, um, but the unpacking of it was just sitting with people that cared about me and saying, 
they, they actually forced me by saying, are you okay? And you need to talk about this and you need to, you need to process this. And, and so sitting with, with great people that had my best interest in mind. So we got to go there. There's people that you could talk to that don't. So stay away from them, but people that have my or social best media or, or social media. I mean, I'm not sure that that's the place either. I mean, to follow it up, how did you find those people? Where were those people at? I, I found them in the faith community. Um, and uh and family was was the best and so so finding those people that have your best interest in mind friends from high school that heard about it and you know we process things together but but then after you have after you found those people and you've done that then just being open about it there were years i didn't talk about it at all um and uh and so it once you begin to share about the broken pieces of your life uh you know, we're all here today. We're on this podcast. People are listening in their cars and, you know, whatever they're doing, mowing the yard. But uh, they're, they're listening today. They are in the place that they are because of the choices that they've made and the circumstances that they've walked through. And I think that we forget about that as human beings, that the customer that comes in today to my business is answering and has the attitude that they have because of the circumstances that they're in. And, uh, and so I was a totally different person when I held all that in than whenever I opened it up to the world. And so, uh, so there's a lot of people that I think could get to their destiny, could live out the goal, the dreams in their heart, uh, but, but there's things in their life that they have to just deal with. And when we deal with them, the thing that seems so gigantic now just becomes uh, another thing in our life that brought us to where we are. I, I would not want to go back and relive that, just to be honest with you. Um, I would, I would go back and change it 100% if I could, but allowing that to speak through ministry and through this podcast and through other places and that God showed up through other people. Um, mm -hmm. my help came in my, and, and my help came because I allowed other people into my world that had my best interest that, that took, that pointed me in the right direction to find the truth in the word about what happened and, and, and all that, but just get out of yourself and allow other people to get in your life. And by doing that, things start to expand and accelerate. Yeah. Hey Rob, I think a lot of people that would go through that would, I'll just, I'll use words that I think could be going through some people's minds right now. Um, ask God why blame God, why did you take our child? Why did this happen? And it would, it could rattle their faith, their belief, their marriage, a lot of things like that. And, you know, this is like a lot of podcasts that we end up doing here on the seat, go create. It's going in a direction that we had not anticipated. We <laughs> had a two minute talk before we started hit record and now we're going down another path, but I, I can't not go here. So can you respond to someone who might say that? Maybe you cried out why and blamed yourself. I don't know. I mean, yeah. So, that. yeah. So, um, I mean, I grew up in a faith filled home. We had, I mean, we, we loved the Lord. It was great. Um, we were going to a great church and, um, life happened and, uh, we lost our daughter and I, I actually just blamed the Lord. I blamed myself. I blamed everybody. Um, and that was building the walls. And, uh, and a lot of us journey through life and every day because of hurt or um, picking up an offense or whatever, we put another brick on the wall. And so I did that actually for a couple of years. Um, and, uh, and I wasn't seeking anything. I was just uh, piling on doing the daily things of life and, and questioning the Lord. Um, it was actually through a, another person who would come into the flower shop and buy flowers for his wife every week um, that just got me to talking. Um, and, uh, and you know what, when we built walls of rejection and hurt and, and offense and all those things that we picked up along the way, um, that every time we have a conversation where we're open with someone and we're vulnerable, we're taking the bricks back off and, mm. uh, and loosening that up. And so, um, I, I truly believe that you can't offend me because I'm not here for your approval, Tim. Um, yeah. But but I can pick up an offense and 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 harbor that the rest of my life, and you may never know it. And I think that the that 
that stops us from our destiny. That stops us from, uh, from living out the thing that we're on the planet for. And, uh, and so we become, and nothing against, uh, nothing against traditional work and all that stuff. It's all good. But in my case, uh, being in that situation and building the wall, I was, I was actually doing mundane tasks every day as if I was in a regular job um, and not living out my destiny because I had let those things get in the way. And so um, is that kind of how you were medicating, you know, some people would have a situation like that and would begin drinking. I talked to an old buddy of mine the other day that after 08, downturn he got back alcohol and he were reconnected but is that how you were medicating effort yeah yeah i was medicating by working more and uh and putting energy into the business which i thought would be great and and i can't say that that was wrong but um but it was wrong for my destiny i think that i wasted a lot of time that i could have been hearing the lord whenever i was blaming him And, uh, and I think that that happens to a lot of people just because as life happens, you know, I would, I, the, I don't know the statistic, but there is a large number of, of marriages that don't last losing a child. And, uh, and the only reason is by, by the Lord and by people that were walking beside us that cared more about us than about themselves. Um, you know, revelation 12, 11, we, we, we overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. We do not love ourselves to the death rate. There were people that loved us more than they loved their hours, their time. Um, there were people that loved us more than they loved their money. Cause they would take us out to eat and talk about this stuff and get into our life. And, uh, and so I think that if, if we can get out of ourselves enough to see the hurt in other people, uh, we will, we will see that it will change their trajectory. Sure. Um, two things and then we'll move on. If someone's listening to this and they're hearing you say how other people around you helped you through it, connections you had, and they're telling themselves, I don't have that. I don't have anyone. They may be right. They may be wrong. If they're saying it, that's their perception. That's their reality. What would you, how would you minister to them? What would you advise them to do if they're sitting here going, I'm going through a hurt. I'm going through a situation, I'm going through something, but I don't have the family or the connections in the faith community that, that Rob seemed to have had during that time. Well, I think that, I think that this may be opening up something for you. I, I don't know, but I mean, either one of us, I think would talk to anybody out there that, that wants to talk about it. Um, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they've got two people on the planet that, that would care. And, and that's awesome. Um, number two, there's lots of places to get help, um, and and that's always good to seek help. I I just focused on, you know, I grew up I grew up understanding who God was, um, and I really didn't know who I was, and so uh, my journey was discovering who I was and how I medicated and all those things. But um, but for those out there who would say I don't know I don't know where to go next, um, I would just say you need to find a good family of believers, a good church, a good uh, house where you can settle in. You need to reach out to people like Tim, myself. We've got a whole ministry team at the church that focuses on this, but there's lots of people out there that will help you. You're not alone. You're not alone. And, uh, and there's, there's, there was a group that my wife went to. Um, I went once or twice. I couldn't take it. Uh, personally, it wasn't, it wasn't for me, but, um, there was a group that she went to that was for people that have lost children in our region. And, um, so there's, not just that situation, but there's help out there for whatever you're dealing with, but um, find people that believe in the best in you and that want to see you recover from where you're at. And, and the problem is, is that when we seek to get help, there's a lot of people out there that want to help for their benefit, not for ours. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. That's good. And I do want to give a bit of disclaimer here. I think most people on the podcast know that I record from my mobile office in the RV and uh, and all of a sudden this rainstorm just started. So if they hear something pitter pattering on the roof in the background, that is not to make light of this conversation we're having. But tell tell everyone about your family now, Rob, because so, so there's my, been restoration. There's been a lot that's going on. Correct. Yeah. So uh, my lovely wife of almost uh, this will be 19 years in a few weeks, and uh, and then we have two children, a 16 year old daughter, and uh, and a 12 year old daughter, and so. 
we are we are excited to uh, to be doing what God has called us to do in this season and minister and love on our people and uh, and they're, we're all involved in it and so it's an exciting journey. But God has uh, God has taken us to a place where we can uh, where we can minister out of His ministry to us over that time and help. So we're blessed. Sure. So would you say there's been restoration and was it was I, one of your children recently baptized? Did I see? Yeah, that? yeah. So my daughter was baptized when she was younger, but um, you know, I I be I believe that we identify with his death and baptism with Jesus's death, and so when we go down in there, all the things that have been done to us, said to us, occurred to us, things that we've done, all that stuff just just gets washed off, and uh, and we start fresh, and uh, all that stuff stays in the water, and so. My 16 year old, um, she's like, you know, I did it as an outward sign of meeting Jesus when I was 10. And uh, that was what the church that we were in did. You know, you got baptized. And I believe that's right. Jesus said they were born again and baptized. Um, so I believe that's what we need to do. But um, she's like, you know what? She's like, a lot of things have happened. And I've gone through a lot. And, and you know, I just want I just want to die again to myself and uh, and walk in a new life with him. So Anyway, yeah, so Sunday was a great day. We had people that just jumped up out of their seats and came up and jumped in with me. So it was fun. Awesome. Excellent. And thank you. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. And again, that was not what was planned. I've got all these business questions here, and I'm going to get to a few of them before we wrap up. Hopefully the downpour is not coming through on this podcast microphone, but if it is, you know what? The content is so good, the pitter-patter on the roof is going to have to just... <laughs> just be there. My, my sound engineer son, Joshua is excellent, but I'm not sure if he's that good enough to take rain out of the situation. Anyway, um, Rob, you, you have a, I'm going to shift gears a little bit. There was, there's one thing you had on your bio that I want to ask about before we wrap up with some business items. And it said you're a school board member, which to me is the most basic of political servant areas in our country maybe i don't know if it is in other countries we've got actually listeners in in multiple countries now i don't know what it's like there but in in the united states serving on the school board is kind of like first of all entryway into politics it's probably the best and the worst of all of our political structure yeah. tell me a little bit about being on the school board oh man this could be an hour conversation in and of itself but i'll try to keep it short so it is probably the least, the lowest level of elected government that we have. Maybe a township trustee would be lower. I don't know. Um, but we serve, uh, we serve for very little money, which is awesome. Um, but we deal with the craziness because everybody has an opinion of their kids' education. Um, and it's awesome, but we're dealing with 1,000 kids or 2,000 kids or whatever, um, and we got to look at the best interests of everybody. And so... I ran for the board because our district had, uh, without the public knowledge, voted to close elementary schools, combine everybody together to force a vote on building a new school. Uh, they had tried to pass a levy for a new school many times and just didn't, didn't go over. So they decided, well, we'll close the schools, combine all the kids together, and uh, make it uncomfortable for the parents that their kids have to be bused everywhere. And then we'll, we'll put it on the ballot that fall we'll get a new school. That was their mindset. I didn't know it at the time. I just was upset. I was frustrated as a parent. And I said, how can I take action to stop this? And, uh, and looked into it. My father-in-law actually uh, was the first one to look into it. And he's like, hey, you're running for school board. And I said, oh, well, I, I don't know. And he goes, well, you're the one that can talk. And um, so he didn't like to be in the public eye, but we got another person. In Ohio, we have five board members on the school board. And so we ran as three, we got the seats, which means three votes, you, you just took control of the board and uh, five member board. And uh, we reversed that decision, we got 90, or sorry, 79% of the vote. And, uh, and we reversed the vote and the rest is history. We went from, we were declining as a district in our income. So Ohio's weirdly funded. I know other states are too, but so everything comes off of uh, property values and and all that stuff, and you get paid per child, and, and that stuff. So our revenue was actually going down. We were uh, losing, the year before was like 400,000 in the red. We were on pace to do more than that the year that we were elected. We turned that around in that six months that we were on the board. 
the, the fiscal year ends uh, for our school district in July. Um, so we, or June or whatever, so we were elected, took office in January. At the end of that six month period, we, um, we were able to have take that $400,000 slide and turn it into a hundred and some thousand dollar slide. And then every year from then on for the uh, six years that I was on the board, we increased our revenue and lowered our expenses. So we went from being in the whole 400,000 and greater coming into our election to then being, uh, I think it was 1.6 million the last year I was on the board. Um, I actually left the board. I had two years left on the board because we moved uh, to another city. But um, being on the school board has been probably the most awesome thing I've ever done as a public official. Um, I, I can't answer for pastoring yet. Um, it's too, too soon, but I've done a lot of other things, own businesses, been on boards and things. And being on the school board is the best. If you can, if you can have a voice in your child's education, uh, I encourage you go for it. Um, we, we went for it. We saw change and, uh, and someday that'll be a book as well. Um, from red to black. <laughs> no, I'm just got kidding. A lot, of future, got a lot of future books here. We can know I need about, I need about another 40 hours <laughs> a week to get it done. Yeah. Hey, um, one, one, I got a, just a couple of questions before we wrap up here. I'm going to, we're going to finish up with mastery. I want to have you talk about mastery, both business ministry, but, um, how, how do you reconcile money, business, ministry? Uh, you know, we'll throw in the word mammon, you know, from, you know, Matthew six and just, you know, any, anything. And, and, you know, we're, we're really pressed for time. We're up on the end here, but just, I know that's a full sermon or a six parter probably, but yeah, I'll, I'll keep it you, the work, yeah, you work for money and you're in business, but you're also in ministry. And I know, and I know, you know, there are a lot of people that struggle with that. What can you tell us about how you've resolved it if you have or haven't, but it has been a constant struggle. Um, but the, I, I believe that what we talked about at the beginning of the beginning of this podcast really has been the, the solution to the struggle in my own life. And that is, Anytime I've ever focused my motivation to get more money, I have, I have generated trouble and, and turmoil. When I have focused on solving a problem and meeting a need, I've always had money. And so that's business ministry, that's everything. Um, I have made many choices where money was the motivator and it's always ended badly. Um, I've, I've made other choices where helping someone or designing a product to help someone or you know, speaking into someone's life or whatever has, has ended up in a blessing financially uh, to me. So, so it is the position of your heart as you enter a situation, I truly believe. Excellent, excellent, good. And again, there's probably more to that, maybe another podcast in the near future. One of the things that you talk about on your websites, and we'll include some links in the show notes, is the term mastery. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've got some things in business mastery, life cycle, ministry. First of all, define mastery for us. And then I'm going to ask you some questions about what that means in each area as we wrap up. Yeah, so, I, so I'll just use Webster here, but a comprehensive knowledge or skill in a subject or accomplishment. I, I believe that we are all called in, in our field of favor. Um, we're all called to master something. Uh, we're called to to know so much about who we are. We're called to know so much about our business that, that we can help someone through that process. And so um, we, called our, we called our product mastery because it's not something that happens in a minute. It's something that happens over time and it happens because we get wisdom from many directions. So mastery can be because you've done the work and you've accomplished a skill, uh, you, you've really excelled in a skill and now people would call you a master at that skill, a master craftsman or whatever. But I truly believe that that mastery in the way that I would define it is you get to that point, not because of everything that you've done and the mistakes that you've made, but by a community of people that are journeying together and helping other people avoid the mistakes that they've made. So mastery in our model is let's journey together as business owners. Let's journey together as ministry leaders and let's go through and help each other raise the water level of ministry or business in whatever field you're in. And let's journey together to find a solution and to make ourselves masters of the thing that we're called to do. 
Yeah, that's good. And then, and then you offer some things and I want you to tell us briefly about those. We'll include some links in the show notes, but, but you offer some guidance in that area of mastery. Tell us about that. Yeah. So, so there's a couple things. Some people want to do an online course. And so for ministry, we have lifecycleministry.com. You can go take the online course where we talk about the life cycle of a person coming in your ministry. The other one is lifecyclemastery.com, which is uh, an online course where you can see, you can define in your business, the life cycle of a prospect to a client. What are they going to walk through? Have you defined it? Most ministries or businesses that we've worked with have never defined the process from the time someone sees their marketing of whatever it is or hears about their business or ministry to where they are a client referring them clients. They've never mapped out where the person goes. So a lot of people lose, they lose the leads, they lose the prospects because they've not defined where they're going. And so those two courses are self-study. You can go online, purchase them, get the book. We send you the book. And then you've got some Q and a stuff that you can do with us. Um, but going from that, which is self-study to a comprehensive work together model of mastery, we call it mastery by total fusion media. And that is, um, going to working through that process together with others and learning from their mistakes. We have technology that we provide that person that joins mastery, uh, whether it be a ministry or a business, uh, we have technology that they get with that and we help them understand the technology and use the technology. So there's training on all that, but then the philosophy behind the life cycle of a customer or the life cycle of a prospect in your, in your ministry. And so we have online groups, you get the courses, you get the online courses when you join mastery. Um, so that's included in there, but it's a monthly thing that you get and we process through, uh, together on the journey to, um, to wholeness as an organization. So as I said in the beginning, somebody should be able to come into your business and run it without you there. Somebody should come in and know how to run your ministry without you there because you set up processes that automate that or that make it easy for someone to join in. Yeah, that's, that's good. I, and, and I love the, I love the term process. I think, you know, I'm an engineer, industrial engineer by training and I've also done some corporate training and I used to get really frustrated with events because I realized that real change, real mastery to use your term comes from process, comes yeah. from ongoing, you know, a, a good spiritual term is discipleship, you know, spending time with people, doing things with them, interacting. That's really cool. There are so many other things I would love for us to talk about. We didn't even get to some things like the great awakening and others, but I wanted to ask real quick, you've got so much going on, Rob, can you share some of your daily habits, daily rhythms that allow you to accomplish yeah. some of the things you do, just some, some, just some tips maybe for some people. I don't, I'm not asking for your yeah. entire schedule, but. No, no, no. Yeah, that's great. Um, so, so blocking time on the calendar, uh, have to block time, have to be rigid with it and stop in the middle of a project. If your time is up for that project, if your time is up that you've allotted, you have to stop. doesn't matter where you're at. And for us that just want to knock it out and get it done. That was my hardest thing to do blocking the schedule. I have a, I have set times that I'm doing ministry um, with the church and, and growing the team. And I love investing in my leaders. So I have that specifically on my schedule every week that we're not meeting to get tasks done, but we're meeting to grow each other. Um, so that's, that's something in the schedule. And then, uh, and then, so real quick, over the years, one of the things, because I dive in deep and try to process, one of my gifts is a strategist. That's what I love to do. Um, but I got so involved in all the organizations and companies that, I mean, I was spending hours and hours and hours, as you said, laying at, at night, coming up with more strategies and implementations. But um, what I've done that has tremendously helped is, uh, is put in those blocks of time to work with, work on that thing like mastery. So I have now broken my schedule down from spending 40 hours a week working with companies to where I'm spending two days a month, uh, where I am online pouring into tons of companies all at the same time, answering any question they want. But in that specific time frame, uh, I don't give out my cell phone number uh, anymore to companies because I would get calls all the time. And so they have a way to get me. We use tons of online tools like Basecamp and stuff that they can ask questions 
I also hired people on my team to help. And so, um, so those are all the practical things like the, the day-to-day stuff. Um, you got to get your quiet time. You got to get with the Lord if you're a believer. If not, do whatever you do to, to, to just get out of yourself and, uh, and listen. So that's a priority every day. Um, and, uh, and a priority to be with family. And so, um, so those are some of the things and, and really as much as I don't like it, I am a process guy, but I'm not a calendar strict guy, but, uh, but just have to block off time for all those things that matter and, and let the things that don't matter fall off. Yeah, that's good. Those are some good tips for folks. And speaking of blocking off time, we blocked time for this interview that we have now busted over so unfortunately we need to bring this yes. to a close um what's next for you rob just what's what's coming up for you, Did hey, you we are excited. yeah i just got back from bolivia you know there's at this point of the recording of this podcast there's a lot of turmoil down there and so uh we partnered with a, a church down there and so i'll be going back sometime uh to to just go down and love on people um that's what we do if you want to say what's next for me loving on people helping businesses, helping you know, people in the ministry. We have, uh, we have pastors in the region and we have them into our church just to listen, guys, we all need refresh. So, so come here, we'll help it. And then we go there, we go other places and get filled up. But really the next thing for me is, uh, is to focus on this mastery issue, you know, this mastery thing, uh, totalfusionmastery.com uh, to help those people accelerate and, uh, and grow that part of the, of the business side of what I do, you know, the tent making as Paul would say. Um, and then on the ministry side, just continue to watch God move in people's lives. Yeah, that's cool. Hey, we've titled this podcast, Seek, Go Create. There's a lot to that, a lot of background, but one of those words jump out at you and why just as we finish up here? Yeah, so um, the word that jumps out at me is go. Um, one of the, one of the greatest commandments in scripture is go into all the world. And, uh, and, and we have an opportunity, even if you're just a, if you are a business owner today, you have an opportunity to go beyond where you currently are. Um, maybe it takes some technology. Maybe it takes an online course. Maybe it takes some new knowledge. Maybe it takes some help from an outside person, but you have an opportunity to go to a place you've never gone before. And, uh, and so that is, that is one of my favorites. I love the title of the podcast because no matter which word you choose, uh, there's acceleration involved. And so, um, but go would be my word, go into the places. If you're looking for self reflection, go into the places that you never let anybody go and turn on the light. And if you're looking for how to, how to just expand your reach in the world, go and do it and see what happens. And uh, you probably won't regret that. Excellent. Rob, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It's, it's awesome. And thank you for the listeners that have hung on through this thing. Yeah. 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 We brought up, it's, it's all good. So I appreciate it so much. That's going to kind of wrap up this episode. I have a feeling that Rob and I may be speaking again in the future with the recording going to share. This is very, very rich, very, Again, we went in directions that I did not anticipate, and I'm excited that we did because I believe it's a blessing to those listening. Once again, I want to thank you all that have, that have listened to this podcast, taken the time. Thank you once again for sharing it, for rating. That really helps us. It helps to get the word out. I believe that what Rob shared could be a blessing to so many people, and I would ask that if it's blessed you, that you share it. And until next time, listeners, We look forward to talking to you again. Thank you.